My name's Natasha, and in this video, I'm going to answer these PTE questions given to us by you. The first question is this. Is it okay to write my answer in capital letters? The answer to this question is simply no. You should avoid writing in all capitals. PTE clearly states that in the writing tasks, if a response is written in all capitals, it will receive a score of zero. You should only use capital letters at the start of a sentence and for proper nouns. Other situations you need to avoid, which will also be scored a zero, writing in a language other than English, writing a very short or very long essay, not using punctuation, using bullet points or very short sentences, and not writing a response. Here are two questions. They're both about getting a high score in the retail lecture task. The first question asks specifically about improving fluency. Fluency takes practice. Listen to model answers and tread along with the speaker to imitate the rhythm and length of the response. A strategy you can use is to write the letters DM, DT, DS on a page. Then, while listening, write some keywords the speaker uses as they tell their lecture. You need about six phrases, then use the mnemonic DM, DT, DS to retell the main ideas as in, the lecturer was discussing, she mentioned, she described, she talked about, she discussed, she suggested that. Remember that you have 10 seconds to gather your thoughts and edit your notes after the recording stops. Of course, use your own words where possible by selecting synonyms and using paraphrases. Do not pause, hesitate, or repeat yourself. And practice. Here's a question on fill in the blanks tasks. How can I improve? Fill in the blanks has two forms in the reading section. In both cases, you need to select the correct word and word form to complete the sentence. The best way to improve your score is to use a method for reading and writing fill in the blanks, specifically the E2 method. So here's an example fill in the blanks task. Let's also quickly run through the E2 method. First, look at the options and identify the word type noun, adjective, verb, preposition. Then, start at the beginning of the text and work your way through the sentences that require a blank to be filled, looking at words either side of the blank. This will indicate the word type. For example, an article will indicate that the blank word is a noun. If the word following the blank is a plural verb, then the blank may be a plural noun. Finally, Eliminate words from the list that cannot be correct and choose from the remaining words. At e2testprep.com, we have an extended video that walks you through the method in detail with some practice questions and answers. I highly recommend you check it out. So, the next two questions are on the write essay task. The first one asks, can we use a template in the essay? My advice is to not memorize a template. Instead, memorize a structure. The structure I'm going to show you answers this second question, which asks how to logically organize your essay. Let me show you how to organize your essay. First, paragraph one is your introduction. Begin with some brief background about the topic. Then, paraphrase the prompt. Finally, state what your argument is. Paragraph two should include the main body of your essay. Here, you present your first main idea or argument that supports your stance. Be sure to back this up with additional information and an example. Then conclude the paragraph. Paragraph three is another main body paragraph. This is where you add your second main idea that supports your argument or discuss the other side of the argument. Again, support this with additional information and an example. Then conclude the paragraph. Finally, in paragraph four, the conclusion, you summarize your two main points and end with a strong statement. Don't bring up new ideas here. Let's move on to another PTE writing question. It says, 
what is the specific maximum number of words for the summarized written text section? Well, in the summarized written text section, the maximum number is 75 words, though we usually recommend between 30 to 40 words for this task. For the essay, however, you should aim to write between 20 to 30 words. Here's a question on the write from dictation task. Is punctuation important? Apparently, punctuation is not assessed in this task, but it is always a good idea to practice and use correct punctuation. Capital letter at the start of the sentence and a full stop at the end. If you use a capital letter in the middle of the sentence, make sure you know why. As a general rule, they are not common in the middle of a sentence, except for proper nouns like people's names, subjects, organizations, and addresses. Here's another write from dictation question. Can we add extra words in write from dictation? No, do not add any extra words. Just rewrite the sentence exactly as you heard it. Let's listen to and answer an example write from dictation question. So, listen now and write down exactly what you hear. Have you ever wondered what animals think and feel? Did you get it? Let's see the answer. It is, have you ever wondered what animals think and feel? With this answer, you would get full marks. If you added an extra word to the sentence like can, for example, have you ever wondered what animals can think and feel? Your answer would be incorrect and you could lose some marks. Okay, here's a question about spelling. It asks, should we use American English or British English for the PTE exam? For example, should we use a word like visualization with an S or visualization with a Z? PTE will accept either, but it is best to learn and stick to one system in the test. Parts of the world use American English, like the Philippines, while others use British English, like Australia and New Zealand. Be mindful of both pronunciations and spellings if possible, but try to be consistent through the test by only using one, not both. Here's another question. Do you have any more tricks for picking answers in retail lecture? A simple trick for retail lecture is to listen out for the main ideas that appear throughout the lecture. You will need around six main ideas and these will be spread fairly evenly through the audio text. The speaker may use discourse markers such as next, and then, and however, these indicate a new idea is being introduced. So, listen for the first main idea, then listen for the introduction of the next main idea. Repeat until you've taken note of every main idea in the lecture. And here's another writing question. How can I improve my spelling? English spelling is challenging. It can be helpful to search online for the 100 most common spelling errors and focus on learning these. Read widely in English and watch English language video content with English subtitles. Spelling improves through repeated exposure and increased familiarization. Here's the final question. How can I improve my general English speaking skills? Well, Podcasts are a great way to learn new ideas, new vocabulary, stress patterns, and pronunciation. We recommend listening to two types of podcasts. The first type of podcast you should listen to is a podcast about a topic you find interesting. It could be a podcast about sports, news, or just one of your hobbies. The second type of podcast you should listen to is an English learning podcast, and specifically, Everyday English with E2. Yes, I know it is our podcast, but I promise you will find it useful. In this podcast, we discuss all things English from pronunciation tips to new vocabulary to idioms, and we have a range of accents for you to get familiar with. Everyday English with E2 is available for free on a range of podcast platforms. Check it out. So, We've answered all the questions we've received from you, our E2 PTE community. If you have more questions, write them into the comment section and we'll try our best to answer them 
or maybe even feature them in an upcoming video. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more PTE preparation videos. See ya!